welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Rich Reviews and today we're going to talk about all things Manatino. Today's video is sponsored by Rich Reviews. Rich Reviews now provides services to support our viewers in purchasing their own dream supercar. Our services currently include pre-purchase inspection, support calls and collection video to document you collecting your own dream supercar. More information in the description below. Hope you enjoyed the video guys. So we're filming today from a cool National Trust area. We're constantly trying to bring you new backdrops and interesting backdrops. And obviously with the wildlife backdrop that we've got today, you know, it's pretty cool and, and quite uh, relevant to the sort of world that we're living in today, whether that's good or bad. Excuse me for wearing the sunglasses today. By the way, they're Ferrari sunglasses. So thanks very much to Martin. He knows who he is. He's, he's helped us get a, a cool pair of these from Italy. Thanks, Martin. Um, so when I say us, me and my son. So. Before I go into the depths of what the Manatino does on a Ferrari, I want to cover off a few terms first of all. And the terms I'm going to cover off are stability control, traction control, what the actual Manatino does with regards to the suspension. So the technicalities of, of what actually happens in the car. So that when, I, when we go through and we do some driving and show you the actual different driving modes, you'll have an appreciation of technically what's actually happening in the car. So let's start with traction control. I think most people will know what traction control is, but in effect, it's as the name suggests, it's managing the traction of the wheels. So if a wheel loses traction, the intelligence of the system looks to stabilize that, that, that situation. So it will use the brakes, etc., to make sure that the actual wheels don't lose traction and that they continue as much as possible. And so and obviously if you're losing traction, it will look to brake certain wheels uh, to be able to resolve that issue. Now, stability control is different to traction control. Stability control uses traction control to stabilize the mode of the car. And in effect, it tries to keep the car in the same mode, in the same direction that you intended the car to travel. So it has a lot more sensors involved. It has sensors around the steering and obviously around the brakes um, and around the, the ABS system. That comes into play because it uses the sensors on the ABS system to interact with it, as does the traction control use the ABS sensors. So the stability control will use the traction control system to help direct the car and keep the car in the correct direction and in addition to to using the stability control it always also uses the engine management system to change the mode of the engine so if you're revving the engine and it sees that you've lost you've lost stability of the car and, the, and you've lost traction of the wheels it will actually drop the revs of the of the engine to gain stability of the car to try and keep it in the direction that you intend the car to go so hear me use terms like magna ride suspension. Now, what is magna ride? What does that mean? Now, that's the term used for the suspension and in effect for the damping system that's used on Ferraris. Magna ride, in effect, is a system where the dampers have magnetic particles within the fluid, within the, within the oil type viscous fluid that's within the dampers. And that, those magnetic particles can be attracted or affected by an electrical impulse. So you put an electrical signal or an electrical charge into the damper mechanism and it changes the viscosity of that fluid by changing the way the, the, the magnetic particles align. So to bring it all back to the Manatino, Frank Stevenson developed the Manatino while he was developing the F430. Now the Ferrari 430 had the first implementation of a Manatino and 
for a bit more understanding, manettino is actually the Italian word for little lever or little switch. Some perceptions are that the 355 had a version of the manettino in there, but not in a, in a switch format. It didn't. The 355 had the first sports suspension button. It was actually a toggle switch, and that actually had the effect of firming up the suspension. Obviously, if you switched it off, it then dropped out that firmness of the suspension, but it was a sports suspension setting. It didn't change any interaction with the ECU unless you had the F1 gearbox, the, the automated, in effect, manual, hydraulically operated gearbox. It was the first one of its kind in the Ferrari, first one of its kind in the Ferrari. And then if you change the, the, the dampering setting, it also made the gear changes a bit snappier and a bit faster. So when we take the car out on the road, I'll be using variations of those terms to explain what's happening when we change the Manatino settings. So let's get the car out on the road now and talk you through what's actually happening when we change through the Manatino settings for the different driving modes. settings of the Manatino and how it's configuring the car. Now please keep in mind my description of the terms that I'll be using, so stability control, traction control, etc. and what that actually does to the car. In effect, as you move from the wet mode that the car's in at the moment, forward and around to ESC off, you're in effect introducing less traction control and less stability control, so you're switching those decreasingly out. So you're switching those those support aids out. So we're currently in wet mode. In wet mode you've got the most stability control and the most traction control. This mode is used predominantly for when it's sort of wet conditions or icy conditions or when you really need the, the maximum stability for the car. You put it into wet mode and that gives you, as I, as I detailed there, as I intimated there, maximum stability control, maximum, maximum traction control. That also gives you the most comfort as well because it switches bumpy road mode on. So by default, in wet mode on a Manatino, bumpy road mode is switched on. Now moving it round to sport mode, sport mode changes the mapping in the ECU. It makes the gear changes slightly more reactive, slightly more aggressive, um, but it also switches stability control and traction control to normal. So that means it loosens it off a little bit, it lessens stability control, lessens traction control, just that little bit, so that you've got a sport mode. And now this is the normal, what's called the normal mode of driving for these cars. Sport mode is the normal mode of driving. So when you're driving like I am today, normal nice weather, nice conditions, no issues, apart from that clown there. You'd use, you'd use sport mode. You'd only use wet mode when it's bad conditions. When you have a concern that the car isn't very stable, automatically then move into wet mode. So sport mode, reduced traction control, reduced stability control to normal modes. So it's not off and it's not load in those, for those particular options. It's just in, puts it into a normal conditions, into normal settings for normal driving. Now as you move round to race mode, what race mode does is it changes the ECU configuration so you have snappier, more aggressive gear changes. So the gear changes a lot faster. And I've still got, it in, I've still got the car in auto mode at the moment because it makes it easier when I'm talking to you to not have to worry too much about changing the paddles. 
and also when you're in race mode it reduces traction control and reduces stability control and as you can see from juggling around now I can now switch bumpy road back in because it's a bumpy section of road that we're on because bumpy road is not automatically configured it's not automatically on when you have the car in race mode and it isn't automatically on either when you're in sport mode now moving around to CT off what that does is it switches off traction control but it leaves stability control switched on. Now stability control does use variations of traction control so it leaves the stability control on but switches traction control off. So again this is more of a, of a track mode as you can see it's got more bumpier as well because it's automatically switched off by bumpy road mode setting so I switch again bumpy road mode back on instantly it smooths out the track so it makes it a lot smoother on the roads because it softens up these, the settings on the, on the dynamics of the suspension. But stability control is still on, but traction control is off in CT off. It's important to remember stability control is still on and in effect ABS is still on. In fact, ABS is never switched off. ABS always stays, remains on. Now also, as you move between these different conditions, especially between race mode and CT off mode, the Magna ride configurations are changed as well. So as I mentioned earlier, remember, there's electrical charge or electrical signal that goes into the dampers to change the viscosity of the fluid on the dampers. As you move forwards around from wet mode further to ESC off, you're changing the damper settings to a more aggressive damper setting. So you're getting more of an electrical charge going into the dampers to, to um, attract those magnetic particles to make the fluid more viscous, to reduce the damping, to make the damping more aggressive. So that's important to remember as well, that as you move the Manatino around, you're reducing the damping and making the ride more aggressive and in effect more firmer, which is what you'd want for track road use, more aggressive use. Now I'm not gonna switch, go, I'm not gonna turn around to ESC off, which is traction control off and stability control off, because you, you know, it's not, a, it's not a cool thing to do. You're in effect switching everything out. And just in case somebody comes at me in the road, and I need traction control, or, and I need stability control, I'm not gonna switch that out. In fact, I'm gonna switch it back to sport mode while I'm explaining ESC off to you. Now ESC off, as the name suggests, is everything off. It's traction control off, it's stability control off. The only electronic aids that you've got there is ABS and EDIF. So those are the only aids you've got. In effect, it's up to you. So everything's up to you. <laughs> So it's, it's also, I believe, known as hero mode. So I wouldn't recommend using CT off or ESC off at all when you're on the road. And I, to be honest, I wouldn't really recommend using race mode on, on the road either. Um, a lot of people do use race mode because they like the way it changes the aggressiveness of the gear changes and of the driving mode. But I personally would, most, I personally mostly stay in sport mode. There was a time when we were on our way to top gear. If you, if you check the video, you'll note um, the section that I'm talking about and it's a little bit damp the settings and I changed the mode to race mode to, to sharpen up the, the gear changes as I'm talking and you'll hear me go quiet because it actually loses traction on the back um, and that's because I was in race mode and it was a little bit wet so I quickly moved it back into, into wet mode so uh, that was a lesson I learned very quickly there thankfully the uh, stability control caught it and pulled it back in alignment just as, a, as an aside here, this is the Marlborough that we're driving through now, beautiful Wiltshire town. And this is a town that you'll, you'll note a lot that we've uh, driven a lot through and we've uh, covered off a lot in film. It's a beautiful town in, in Wiltshire. It's actually the, the town that's, that's been used a fair bit by Top Gear as well. When they had their supercars that they'd all bought, they're, they're quite um, old limited fun supercar. And when they were practicing reversing or they were showing, um, trying to mark each other um, how to reverse. So just to show you the difference between race mode and sport mode, I'm gonna just show you a bit of spirited driving in sport mode, and then gonna switch into race mode and show you the, the race conditions the difference between race and sport mode.
see it's still fairly aggressive and what the system tends to do is assess how you're driving the car and it will make the gear change is snappier if it feels that you're driving the car more aggressively obviously within the, the Manitino settings mode so within sport mode only up to the limits of sport mode so I'm going to switch it now into race mode instantly the gear changes are more aggressive you can, you can feel that that surge as I change gear I've got to be careful because there's a car coming here I don't want to scare the life out, the hell out of him just switch the bumpy road mode back on again because obviously it switched bumpy road mode off road mode the damping is, is a lot more which is a substantially reduced and also I can feel that the car is a lot more aggressive it's interacting with me a lot more aggressively with regards to the the gear changes and the throttle response the throttle response is substantially increased and the gear changes are snappier switch it back into sport mode it's a fantastic thing about a 45a You've got all these different modes in the Manatino and you can drive it as aggressively as you want. You can get a thrill from driving the car quite, quite aggressively. And then you can switch the car into a nice lazy mode, switch it into auto like it is now and put it along when you're in traffic or when you just want to take it easier. And it deals with it, no issues. The DCT clutch, the DCT gearbox, no problems whatsoever deals with it. Um, it's only when you're driving really slowly in those to tell traffic does the, does the dual clutch gearbox have any sort of issues with regards to moving you forwards and backwards it becomes a little bit edgy but that's the pure nature of a dual clutch, dual clutch um, that's a, that, but that's the nature of a dual clutch gearbox you're not going to get it much better than that it's a bit more refined in the Roma um, because it's designed to be more refined the electronics are configured to make the gearbox more refined and of course you've got an additional uh, like an overdrive gear as well you've got an eighth gear in the Roma as well but uh, you couldn't want for more really and this is why the 458 is such a loved car you've got everything you can drive it nice and easy relaxed no issues you can switch it into snappier modes you can drive it more aggressively you get all the fun out of it and and you know you've got your wet modes as well that makes the car more stable with traction control stability control fully switched on to its maximum extent that is possible in the car configuration so you can drive the car in a more in a stable mode with it helping you as much as possible it's a really cool car and this is why people love the 458 so hopefully that's covered off all the Manitino settings for you and explained all the different modes hopefully that's given you a good appreciation of what those modes provide and how they change the settings and configuration of the car both in the damping the responsiveness the throttle responsiveness and the gear change selection the aggressiveness and the, and the aggressiveness of gear changing so before we close out the video a lot of people are interested in the watches i wear because i've got a watch collection and i cover that off in my watches playlist so today i'm wearing the rolex gmt2 nicknamed the root beer 126711 CHNR. Now the CH of the CHNR stands for chocolat and the NR stands for noir. So chocolat noir. And that's French for, in effect, cho chocolate and black. So chocolate being the chocolate brown of the bezel and the black being the black of the bezel. If you've enjoyed the video, please give the video a thumbs up, give it a like. Great future content to come. Thanks for watching guys and we'll catch you in the next video.